This video is brought to you in part by Squarespace. Welcome back to Sonic Speed Reading, and we are back with Archie, once again with one of their super specials. Or before they were called super specials anyway. But if you ask any old school Archie fan what some of their favorite issues are, you're probably gonna get Mecha Madness, followed quickly by Super Sonic versus Hyper Knuckles. Yeah, while well, Archie is still largely associated with picking up the baton left by Sonic Sad AM and all the American characters and all the drama later on with the lawsuit business, there was a little bit of time there where it felt like they were really trying to cater to the larger gaming fan base. It took a while for Knuckles to show up, at least it felt like it did when I was a kid, but when he did, they really went all out and really played up the rivalry between the two Rat Boys, and the comics became a great place to see fights that we never would have seen, still haven't seen, in the main game line. What would happen if two robot versions of Sonic and Knuckles fought, but also what would happen if two super formed characters ever came to clashing. So yeah, you better believe this was hype as hell back in the day. This was like a pay-per-view event for, well, Sonic the Hedgehog in comic book form. There's a lot to discuss, so let's jump into it. Right from the start, we have some beautiful cover art thanks to Patrick Spaziante. Nowadays, I can see how it can be seen as very busy, very messy. His art style did evolve, but like so much of early Archie, a lot of what sold the book was this ridiculously detailed art that you never saw elsewhere in the interior. And as a kid, I thought it was a little lame that they didn't just give us Super and Hyper Knuckles right there up front, but I gotta admit, I do appreciate seeing them charge up. It does look like the sprites from Sonic 3 right before they're about to transform. And I do love that. Don't love that the emeralds are gray for whatever reason, but that's fine. This looked amazing. I love the tease of the two super forms in the background. I just can't help but love this. And not enough is said about the interior index art. I think I've said a similar thing when we covered Mecha Madness. It's nowhere near as busy as the cover itself, but it still looks absolutely fantastic. As you can see from the index page, we do have two different stories, as was normally the case, be it the regular series or the one-offs, and we're not going to bother with the backup Pender story. We will discuss it at another time, in a bigger video covering that narrative. But for now, let's get on with the main event, Crash of the Titans. We kick things off with Sonic meeting up with Tails and Sally, as she's looking over a giant monitor, telling Sonic that Knothole has a visitor, Knuckles. He's walking along the outer perimeter of the great forest and if you're not aware of how it works in this canon sonic and his freedom fighter buddies all hide in knot hole which is found within the great forest so nobody's captured and roboticized blah 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 blah, blah. we've talked about it a thousand times before what they did get right even this early on is something that sonic points out knuckles never leaves his floating island which again is what they called it back in the day and even though they are technically allies they are still rivals and sonic is not happy to see the echidna walking around his turf. They continue to look at the monitors and it looks like Knuckles is on the border of Robotropolis and Sonic immediately assumes that Knuckles is going to make a deal with Robotnik. At this point, if you've been following along with the narrative, most of the readers already know Sonic knows better. He's just looking for an excuse to pick a fight. And Sally yells after him that she just wants Sonic to talk with Knuckles. But of course, nobody, be it the reader or Tails or Sally, believes it's going to remain cordial. We then turn our attention to Knuckles himself. As he gives a little bit of commentary on Robotropolis, if I remember correctly, this is his first time in this area, and it just confirms to him that Echidna Society was right to abandon technology and revert to being environmentally friendly. Keep in mind, game fans, that this canon is completely different, and the lore for the Echidnas is also completely different. For now, Knuckles just catches the reader up to speed as to why he's here. In a previous issue, the Triple Trouble special, Knuckles saw a Chaos Emerald break in half, something they didn't think was possible. And that worries the Guardian, because in this lore, the floating island was raised into the sky not by the Master Emerald, at least not yet, but by 12 Chaos Emeralds. And now, they only have one. So Knuckles wants to find another one, and he starts his journey by looking at the Book of Myths, something that was randomly mentioned in that same Triple Trouble special. And this is where Knuckles learns that the Chaos Emeralds are mystically linked to rings found in zones and one very
very specific spot, the Lake of Rings. If you're familiar with Sat AM, you get the basic idea. Every now and then, a ring just pops out of the lake. And since some say that rings are byproducts of emeralds, it's possible that you could find an emerald in the lake. Now, how they find the lake, well, Knuckles points out that a word they mention is radiates. And Knuckles knows that Robotnik lives in a radioactive city. So he puts his tinfoil hat on and says, what if the radiation isn't caused by pollution, but instead by a nearby lake of rings? <laughs> Very loosey-goosey, but there you go. They had to get it done in a page and a half. But that brings us up to the present, where Knuckles finds himself not in front of a lake, but instead a really crappy grotto filled with trash and junked up camera equipment. Doesn't look like there's much there, but Knuckles is still going to give it the once over, just as Sonic gives him the once over, as the hedgehog arrives and greets the echidna with a punch to the face. This leads us straight into part two, where Knuckles finds his footing, asking Sonic if he's looking for a brawl. And while Sonic says that he would love to, he's first required to read this, and I love this little joke. Sonic unfurls a roll of parchment and quickly reads, and I use that term loosely, the word of Princess Sally, saying, I, Princess Sally, blah, 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 legal department requires, yak, yak. I just love that Sonic does not care whatsoever, and neither does Knuckles, as he just punches Sonic in the face right through the paper. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is all the reason these two are fighting in this comic. That it's all it takes. They don't like each other, they're just looking for another excuse to punch each other in the face and they get straight to it. Sonic powers up his figure 8 move. This is what Archie called the super peel out and this was a move that Sonic used to beat Metal Sonic in a previous issue. But instead of winning a race, Sonic uses it to launch straight into Knuckles, knocking him flat on the floor. But Knuckles keeps track of Sonic's movement, noticing he's circling around a tree. So Knuckles just grabs the tree by the root, pulls it, dragging it into Sonic, forcing his quills through the park. So now Sonic's head is stuck in a tree and Knuckles is pissed because Sonic just straight up ambushed him in a public place. <laughs> but Sonic's not listening. He yanks the rest of the tree up by the roots, still stuck to his head, and lands it on <laughs> Knuckles. But before the fight can continue on, Sally shows up. Obviously, she would be trailing behind Sonic. She was well aware that a fight would break out immediately. And here we get a completely unexpected reaction out of Knuckles, with a gasp saying her full title, Princess Sally Acorn. While Sonic just looks confused and wonders what the heck Sally's doing there. She's already a little ticked with them because, well, they are trying to save the environment and they're clearly killing trees just to kill each other. But even with the fight calming down with Sally's presence, the two rivals continue to bicker, and while they can't punch, they go straight to name-calling. I love their relationship. But Sally shuts them up, saying that there was something on Earth when they yanked up the tree. Nicole is picking up some serious radiation, and Sally leads over and says, Don't be shy, boys. Take a look down here. Oh my. Well, that panel layout was certainly a choice. Anyway, the hole, <clears throat> hole in the ground reveals a gateway to an unknown zone full of magic rings and chaos emeralds, which is what Knuckles was looking for, so he leaps straight in. Ignoring the heed from Sally to wait, and Sonic, still jonesing for a fight, begins to leap in right after. But as he's leaping in, he hears Sally exhaustedly say that Knuckles hasn't changed since the summers they used to spend together. <laughs> and as you can imagine, that stops Sonic dead in his tracks, wanting to know what she's talking about. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, this is where they started to drop in little hints that Sally and Knuckles have a former relationship. What kind of relationship it is, they don't really flesh out until later on in the series, but this is Archie. They're dropping in some love triangle drama, and there's a cute little back and forth between Sally and Sonic before he continues on after Knuckles. And that's all well and fine, but that's not what we're here for. We're here for Sonic and Knuckles. As we get a full page showing off this un known zone. Now, as a kid, this was cool and distracting on two different levels here. What was cool was seeing all of these game elements in this comic. That didn't really happen all that often in early Archie. So seeing a ton of rings, a star posts, spikes, ore bots, the emeralds, it's all well and fine. But it was distracting because even as a kid, I could tell that the artists and writers weren't very familiar with the source material. Just for a quick example, for stuff I noticed when I was a kid, there's an item monitor 
that just looks like the scope on a submarine. The level layout doesn't make a whole lot of sense, that's fine. Again, there are ore bots here, which didn't make any sense to me because those are badniks, and if Robotnik knew of this place, why isn't he harvesting all of the rings and emeralds and everything like that? Oh, and obviously, the emeralds! In the games, they don't just float around willy-nilly. And to catch up anybody who's not familiar with early Archie, there weren't just seven chaos emeralds of different color. All the emeralds were green, and there was an abundant amount of them. And because of that, as a kid, I just chalked this place up to being an incredibly special zone that just had a ton of stuff in it. Even if it was breaking the rules of the game, it was very satisfying to see, and also satisfying watching these two characters collect all this stuff. It is a little weird seeing that the rings aren't disappearing, they're actively staying on their bodies, but hey, I'm not going to be too pressed about it. I just want to see these two transform already, and they waste no more time with that. Sonic runs over Knuckles collecting 50 rings and 7 Chaos Emeralds, the magic amount to transform him into Super Sonic. Yep, Sonic is transforming just to show off in front of his rival and to kick his ass a little bit harder. We have seen Super Sonic in the series before, and like that previous transformation, you'll notice that Super Sonic's quills don't stand up on end. If anything, they just get a little bit more rustly, or maybe he grows an extra quill. I don't know. When I was a kid, this bothered me quite a bit, but nowadays, considering how often we see Super Sonic in media, this is fine. This is just another rendition of the character. I still think this looks cool for what it is. But thanks to Sonic openly bragging about the exact amount of rings and emeralds he needed to transform, Knuckles follows suit, picking off the last three rings he needs to catch up, and in turn, transforming into Hyper Knuckles. So, yes, once again, just to show you how they're veering off from game canon, if you even want to consider the Hyperforms canon, I know a lot of you like to argue about that already. Here, Hyper is just a name. It's not a secondary transformation. That's just what Knuckles decided to call himself. And like the game, you can see he does glow pink. I know technically he's mostly just flashing a white light and it ends up just looking pink, but here it's just straight up pink. And not only that, I do appreciate that they go out of the way to try to differentiate Knuckles in another way. His dreadlocks grow much longer. And now that I'm looking at this all these years later, I think his knuckles actually curve. They look a little bit sharper. I don't know. Guess it really doesn't look that different from standard knuckles. But anyway, our two heroes are now in their super forms. And for the first time, Time, Super Sonic finds himself up against an opponent that can match his power, and he angrily calls Knuckles a copycat, saying that his powers can't compare, and Knuckles just tells him to shut up and slugs him in the face. Face. And while we do get to see some fun moves here, we also do have to rely on the dialogue for some explanations on feats and stats and things of that nature. That's just how they wrote these old comics. Supersonic points out that Knuckles has had his strength increase a thousandfold, and we can also see Knuckles shift forward a little bit. I wonder if that's supposed to represent the after images from the game. But anyway, Sonic returns Knuckles' punch a thousandfold as he uses his upgraded speed to slug the echidna in the face a thousand times. And Knuckles responds by slicing out a piece of the zone and smacking Sonic in the face. <laughs> Knuckles doesn't understand how Sonic can recover so quickly, and Sonic points out that as Super Sonic, he's practically invulnerable, and they continue to talk smack to each other as the two rivals charge towards each other. And then they use this to give us a two-page pinup of the two fighting each other. And by fighting, I mostly mean Sonic grabbing Knuckles by the dreadlock and the arm while Knuckles prepares a punch. <laughs> it's not the most impressive fight I've ever seen. I don't think this is going to make my top 10 anime battles, but this is still fun. And the fight continues on as Knuckles holds off a super spin dash with his mitts, then swinging Sonic up over his body, only to have Sonic use that backward momentum to achieve a super figure eight. So yes, they're taking the basic move set of Sonic and elevating it with super powers. Not too dissimilar to what they do in Sonic Frontiers. I kind of love that. And I also love this insane move that Knuckles does next as he runs across the ground using 
in his hands, twirling his mitts like Sonic would do with his feet just so he can kick Sonic in the mouth, which really pisses the hedgehog off. And the two charge at each other full blast. And as the comic explains, unimaginable raw energy erupts, literally bending time and space. And the walls containing the zone's reality begin warping wildly. The zone can no longer contain itself, so it swells and it cracks and finally it explodes. We quickly turn our attention over to Robotnik and one of his SWAT bots. Mike Gallagher loved using these things, and I loved him for using them because they were hilarious. As it says, my lord of lard, there's an earthquake. Robotnik points out that's something quite different, and they use the SWAT bot to explain that the energy output is off the scale, and in turn, whatever was in that zone is gone forever. It's irretrievable. Robotnik says this is terrible, and when the SWAT bot asks if it's because of the loss of magic rings and chaos emeralds robotic says no it's because this is a 48 page special and he only gets a one page cameo gotta love that meta humor baby but we cut back to a dizzy sonic recovering his consciousness with sally standing over him telling him to take it easy and she quickly explains what happened which the swap bot already explained to us the zone is destroyed there's nothing left and that Sonic had been blown back to the surface and landed here back to normal, which is next to the Lake of Rings. And the comic quickly points out that the busted up camera equipment is actually fully functional. It's not really that big of a deal, but in previous comics they have had cameras just show up out of nowhere, showing stuff on monitors, never to explain it. So I do appreciate that they managed to explain why Sonic, Sally, and Tails were able to keep an eye on Knuckles at the very beginning of the story. And yes, it would make sense for them to keep an eye on the Lake of Rings. And thanks to those cameras, Tails and Sally were able to keep an eye on what was happening. They saw the crazy fight between Sonic and Knuckles, they managed to see reality tear itself apart, and they saw the stupid hedgehog land next to the lake, so they got over there before Robotnik could figure out what was happening to recover him. And then they tease some more love triangle crap, and Sonic just doesn't care, he just wants to know if there's gonna be chili dogs when they get home. And that's the end of that, at least on Sonic. Sonic's end of things. Meanwhile, Knuckles returns to the floating island, meeting up with Mighty, where news of his crazy battle has already reached the inhabitants. And apparently, Mighty is fully aware of everything that's happened, and also aware that all the emeralds were lost in the zone. But Knuckles just smirks as he turns around to reveal that he actually managed to weasel away one of the emeralds. So yeah, while a lot of everything was lost from the zone, and if these two stupid idiots just could have kept it together, Together, the heroes could have really utilized all of that energy for themselves. At the very least, Knuckles got what he wanted. And ultimately, it was for a good cause, to protect his home. And that is where the story ends. As you notice, it's very light on actual plot. This was just an excuse to get these two fighting. And by today's standards, it's not an incredibly impressive fight. And I will admit, even back then, I was a little disappointed because Mecha Badness, as short as it was, was, had its interiors done by Patrick Spaziante, same guy who drew all these amazing covers. The interiors were instead done by Art Mahini, with inks by Rich Koslowski. And I don't know if I'm saying any of those names correctly, please correct me if I'm wrong. Art had a much softer style in comparison, and I don't know if it was the best choice to go with his designs when it comes to a big crazy battle. Spaz was great with stuff like this, clearly he loved designing that stuff, but he was also probably very expensive and very busy. So can't imagine they could have brought him on every single time they had a big knockdown drag out brawl like this. Not to discredit Art by any means, he still did a great job with his pencils here. And nowadays it is still kind of cool because Art did a lot of storyboarding for Sonic Sad AM, so it felt like this was the closest we got to Sad AM versions of some game characters. That's not something I appreciated as a kid because I was desperately starved for expanded game lore, really didn't like the landscapes and layouts of the Sad AM universe. But nowadays, now that I can appreciate 
these different canons of Sonic, it's really cool seeing all this stuff combined, and how Archie interpreted these transformations and how a fight would play out. And I will give them props for that because that's the kind of crap I wanted and I still think fans want to this day. It's stupid, it's simple, but it's a lot of fun and they're silly rainbow rap boys. Let them shine, let them punch each other in the face. It is a little crazy they've never taken advantage of that in the games. The closest we got was Sonic X with Super Sonic versus Super Shadow. Outside of that, it was just this, Super Sonic versus Hyper Knuckles. And because of that, I still think this is a very important Sonic comic. Yes, it's just dumb fun. No, the story itself is nothing special. And yeah, a lot of why I love this is simply due to nostalgia. But all the same, I hope I could explain to you why I love this as much as I did when I was a kid. This stood out on a store shelf. These were the crazy cool ideas I wanted when I was a kid. This was one of the rare times early Archie was fully embracing game-centric mechanics and lore and levels and all that stuff. And even if they didn't fully understand the source material, I had fun with their interpretation. And I hope you did too. Before we wrap up for today, I want to take a moment to talk about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Jumping online and building up your own brand was always an intimidating thing for me. But Squarespace makes that a streamlined, fast, and easy process, all while making you look good thanks to their Fluid Engine, a next-generation website design tool that lets you tweak any of their many, many templates with easy-to-use drag-and-drop tools. And I don't need to tell you how useful websites can be, whether you want to build up a portfolio of your work, an art gallery, or a shop, because yes, they have everything you need to run your own online business, including analytics that help show you the strongest avenues of growth and help you build up marketing strategies which include integration with your favorite social media networks. And they can even help you set up an online shop to sell and distribute custom merch. All you have to do is design it and they'll handle production, inventory, and shipping. Really doesn't get any easier than that. And to make it just a bit easier, if you use my link, squarespace.com slash gameapologist, you'll get 14 days for free, which is plenty of time to see if this is right for you. And when you want to make a purchase, that same link will get you 10% off your first order. Thank you again to Squarespace for sponsoring the video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you'd like to see me get a little bit more in depth with other Sonic comics, I've got a full playlist covering a whole bunch of IDW Sonic. We have a couple other videos covering Archie Sonic, and I would really like to get into Archie Sonic proper. So if that's something you'd like to see, please let me know and stick around so you don't miss any upcoming videos. Thank you for sticking around. Thank you so much to the patrons who support the channel, including these fine folks here. Kyle Winter, Cirrus the Skeptic, Joseph Duncan Sonic 2 Blue is my aka Nick's biggest hero, John, Josh Strider, Hatsworth, Tiny Jericho, Ginger Bob, Jack of All Spades, Tristan Trap, Meekers, Dun Dun, Quote, Resident Fanboy, Miles the Prower, Jeremy Singer, Mr. Boo J, Sam Webster, Fishflop, Lucas Lipker, The Bad Pal, Jonathan Dobbs, Haley, Chad, Is Sonic Team Making You Blue, Dimps Leaving You Dumped, Big Red Button Leaving You a Big Red Headache, I don't think he said leave, Whatever, you get it. Sonic the Chronic. Thank you, SP. Cecil the Glade, The Dark Neon, Stefan Placonica, Three Monic, Graham J. Hall, Lenny X, Wayne is Boss, Lederick, Mr. Jube, Jimmy Duke, STR, The Lumberjack, Trash Baphomet, Autumn from Twitter.com, or X or whatever. Hi, Nick. That Pyromane needs a funny name. Please help. Hyper Pyro, Powerful Pyro, Pumped Up Pyro. I don't know. I'm trying. Jin Sayotome, Boten. I'm not reading that. Enerjack 5, Grayson Conagher, Spades the Nocturne, Ken K of Warheads, Ven One. 101, Paxton Bisbee, Sindarin 7, ha uh, Happy Halloween -y Peeny. <laughs> Twilord, can you believe it guys, Spider-Man 2 is just a month away, Spider-Man 2 in just a month, woohoo, I'm so happy about this information. Paisley, Eric Delgado, Kodinsky, Sayonara, Robocop, Crimson Rose, Nix the Kobold, Sonic P.A.J., Municent, Roxas the Cat, Godzilla, Makuta of Salt, Start by Going Bankrupt, Alexander Watson, Neil Gampa, Conan Kudo, Sharif Pai, The Lex, the most powerful ship in the two universes, Native Nerd 27, Kaido Prower, Swift Cannon, Spearmint, Omega Man 21, Pen Adelaide, Other Envelope, Jamie Torres Jr., The Phantomist, Silver Stars, Daza S, The World's Most Unironic, Eight and a Half, Tail Stand, One More Sonic Robot, Side Effects May Include Anti Sequelitis, Impending Lawsuit Disorder, and Self Induced Ear Trauma, MT Mecha, and Yasai. Alright, guys, that's another video in the bank. We got a whole lot of other stuff to get to, so I'm gonna get to it. Catch you next time. Toot toot, Supersonic Warriors.